Tonight, York Regional Police break down the number of impaired driving charges over the holidays. They determined that it was an on-duty Uber driver who was there to pick someone up. Among those charged over the week between Christmas Eve and New Year's Day, an Uber driver. Plus... There's just no reason that I can think of that he would be detained by a government. A new market man says his twin brother, who was recently arrested in Russia as a spy, is innocent. And... New year, new goals, and new babies. We take a look at how people are celebrating the first day of 2019. Good evening, I'm Talia Ricci. Distracted drivers will face new, harsher penalties starting today. Anyone who picks up their phone could pay $1,000, lose three demerit points, and get a three-day license suspension. And that's just the beginning. Meanwhile, in York Region, police say more than 20 people were charged with impaired driving in under 10 days. Hawaii Fidel has the details. These GTA drivers say there's no excuse for impaired driving. Well, I think it's irresponsible behavior. With today's wording and the way it's advertised, there's no need for 22 people even. The numbers are in, and York Regional Police say they charged 22 people with impaired driving over the holidays. Police hope new impaired driving laws will deter drunk or drug drivers from getting behind the wheel. The new laws give police the right to test anyone they pull over for impairment. And in addition to fines increasing, there's a new $550 penalty for refusing to take a drug or alcohol test. In 2018, York Regional Police laid more than 1,600 charges for impaired driving offenses. And they say the number of drivers getting behind the wheel while impaired is not going down. It's surprising that we're still seeing any at all. Um, the other options are so readily available, there's really no excuse for it anymore. According to York Regional Police in 2018, seven people died in collisions where drugs or alcohol were a factor. Constable Nicole says people should call in if they suspect a driver on the road is under the influence. We have been seeing that. A lot of our arrests are coming from concerned citizens who, you know, see something on the road, they feel it's unsafe, and they make that phone call. That's exactly what happened on New Year's Eve when officers arrested and charged an on-duty Uber driver for driving under the influence. This was the only impaired driving arrest made in the York region on New Year's Eve, which is typically a night where there are a high number of impaired drivers on the road. Constable Nicole hopes this means their messaging is working. And I'm hoping what this uh, signifies is that people were making better decisions and planned ahead uh, when they knew they were going to be drinking. Hawaii Fidel, CBC News, Toronto. We like them, we like to play with them. Like we said, they're like not just like normal friends. We now become like, like family. With them. It's a program called the Together Project. It helps newcomer families connect with their new communities. We'll bring you the story of this Syrian family and their new chosen family a little later in the show. I feel very excited and very pleased to have this uh, special baby girl. I was waiting for her for a long time. She's special for us. What a way to usher in 2019. Little Fatima was the first baby born in Toronto this year, arriving eight seconds after the stroke of midnight and a week before her due date. And that, it seems, is a bit of a theme. It's like totally unexpected. Came one week before. We wanted to have a healthy baby. That is our uh, ultimate idea. Baby Venkatesh was delivered at eight minutes into the new year in Ajax. A healthy little girl with very proud parents. You can call that the ultimate in new beginnings, but they aren't the only people eyeing a fresh start this year. Many of you have set some big goals for 2019, some even starting them today. Our Greg Ross has more. Three, two, one. Starting off the new year with a frigid dip in Lake Ontario. You founded this... 34 years ago? 34 years ago, yeah. Basically, it was uh, my mother came up to my brother on New Year's Day and told us to go jump in the lake. Trent Courage and his brother have done this every year since to raise money for World Vision Canada. And every year, they're joined by more and more people. It's my first time doing, doing a polar bear dip. Okay, yes. well, I should point out that Joanne is from Cuba. Yes, I am. Not used 
to going in the freezing cold water. They convinced me to do this because they were told me something about to wear nice and fans uh, clothes. Those nice fancy clothes are about to get really, really wet. And you're yeah. going to be really, really cold. Yeah, yeah, but we can always dance there. All right, Joanne, how do you feel after that? Oh my God, cold! I didn't see you doing a lot of dancing out there. No, but I can do this. <laughs> it was warm and dry inside the gym today, with many of these people looking for a fresh start on day one of the new year. 2019 is going to be my year of getting in shape. A popular resolution, which is why gyms are often packed at this time of year. It is kind of like Christmas Day for us. <laughs> Everybody's coming in for the new year, New Year's resolution. It's the biggest time of the year for us. But a new gym membership is not the only way to put your best foot forward in the new year. What did you say? Can you use resolutions? Be more awesome. Maybe run a half marathon and travel a bit more this year. I think I want to just try and do things more spontaneously and just like live more in the moment and just, yeah, have fun. Do something spontaneous right now. Um. <laughs> Now, the key to those resolutions is sticking to them. Those gym owners telling me that, yes, January is their busiest month, but they say there's usually a huge drop-off in February. Greg Ross, CBC News, Toronto. London police are investigating after a break and enter at an LCBO. Police say someone drove into the front of the store and then stole from inside. It happened just after 6 a.m. near Dundas Street and Clark Road. Police say they arrived to find the vehicle on scene, but not the person responsible. Store management confirmed they'd stolen some products. The building also had significant damage. Police are asking anyone with information to come forward. A man was rushed to hospital with life-threatening injuries after a hit and run in Vaughan early this morning. Police say a man in his 50s was struck by a small SUV traveling south on Jane Street at 3 a.m. Police believe the suspect got out of his car, saw the man injured, and then got back into his vehicle and drove north. The suspect is described as about 30 to 40 years of age with short dark hair and a partial beard. He was wearing a dark colored hoodie and jeans. Police are asking any witnesses or anyone in the area with surveillance video to contact them. And another hit and run overnight. This one also left a person with life-threatening injuries. It happened at the intersection of Dufferin and St. Clair around 4.30 this morning. The victim was found unconscious on the roadway. Police say the vehicle involved may have been a white Honda Civic or Accord. And what police believe may have been a random attack downtown this morning has left a man in life-threatening condition. We got a call at around 12.35 in the morning, just after the new year had rang in, for a fight that had occurred on the street. A man had been knocked to the ground. Apparently he suffered a fairly serious injury and would not get back up. When officers arrived at the scene near Bathurst and Queen, the victim was bleeding heavily. And after he got to hospital, his condition worsened. Two suspects fled in what police believe was a light blue car. They're looking for any video that people may have captured of the incident. Toronto recorded its first shooting of 2019 early this morning. It happened in the Vaughan Road and Oakwood Avenue area around 5.30 a.m. The victim was taken to hospital where he's in stable condition. The city set a record for gun violence in 2018 with more than 400 shootings. Meteorologist Nick Cernkovich joins us now for a first look at our forecast. And as wet as it was yesterday, it really didn't feel that cold. No, in fact, when you were out there, uh, it was about 5 degrees in the city of Toronto. And then tonight, it's the total opposite. Temperatures dropping to very much below seasonal. And this coming under clear skies. Now, we've got cold temperatures in the forecast. We've also got some snow to talk about as well. Tonight, look for generally clear skies. That's going to help the temperatures drop down into the minus double digits. Tomorrow afternoon, what we're watching watching is increase in cloud cover and then some snowfall not a whole lot of snowfall but we are looking at a general two to four centimeters across the GTA now it's going to come over a fairly lengthy period of time but because the temperatures are going to be on the cold side I think we'll see some of this accumulating uh, on the ground through tomorrow evening so here's the forecast through the next 24 hours minus 12 tonight feeling like minus 15 tomorrow through the afternoon expect light snow flurries to start about two to four centimeters high of minus three more details coming up in just a bit.
Thanks for that, Nick. You bet. A new market man whose brother was arrested in Russia is speaking out tonight. Paul Whalen is a corporate security director and retired U.S. Marine. He was arrested in Moscow on Friday and charged with spying. His family says he was there for a wedding. Earlier today, I spoke with Whalen's twin brother, David, about the arrest. He went to Russia on the 22nd to attend a wedding of a friend of his. And the friend had asked him to come because Paul's visited Russia in the past. Uh, and this friend, uh, he's a former Marine, uh, his relatives, American relatives, were coming over to Moscow to uh, attend a wedding and to tour around. They hadn't been to Moscow before. Um, and it's really indicative of the sort of thing that Paul would do. It's very kind. He's a very generous person. He wasn't there for work. Um, the work he does isn't, as far as I know, sensitive. It's corporate work. I mean, and it's within the corporation that he works for. There's just no reason that I can think of that he would be detained by a government. He has a law enforcement background. He was a former U.S. Marine who served a number of tours in Iraq. He does corporate security. He, it's the sort of personality that you wouldn't expect to be a lawbreaker of any sort, let alone someone who's you know, breaking uh, spy laws. Um, it's just it's inconceivable to all of us that he could be considered a spy. And how did you find out about this arrest? I googled it. I'm a, I'm a librarian, so I got up yesterday morning and I thought, well, what are all the terrible things that could happen to him? And I put those into the search engine and eventually um, a bunch of newswires had re printed the ministry's announcement about his detention. You mentioned that, you know, you were assuming the worst could have happened. Is that because it's pretty out of character for him to not be in communication with his family? It was out of character because uh, Friday at 5 was the last time anybody had heard, of, uh, heard from him, um, just before 5. Uh, and that was the night of the wedding. So the whole point of him going there and helping out was this ceremony. And he's not there. Uh, and the, uh, um, his friend wasn't able to find him after the ceremony, it didn't respond to texts. Um, and at the same time, he's got a dog he loves back home, you know, a little golden retriever who's going to the vet. And my parents, who are older, are in Michigan in a cold winter. And uh, those are the sorts of things he checks up on all the time, you know. If you could give Paul a message right now, what would you say to him? I guess just keep your chin up. Whalen says he's hopeful they will get more details about his brother's state of health and the details of his arrest from the U.S. government tomorrow. A Toronto business is setting an example for anyone with a goal to produce less waste this year. They don't even have any garbage cans. What do they do with their trash? We'll show you coming up. They fled fighting in Syria, moved to Turkey and Lebanon before finally making their way to Canada. The Al Huli family now calls Toronto home. They've settled into life in the city thanks in part to a group called the Together Project. Farah Morali paid them a visit. It's an afternoon visit 
The El Huli family always looks forward to. Oh my God. Oh no. These are volunteers with the Together Project. It pairs Canadians with government assisted refugees to help them settle into their new lives through friendships. We like them, we like to play with them. Like we said, they're like not just like normal friends. We now become like, like family. With the El Huli family like fled Syria like for Lebanon in 2011 as war Lebanon. ravaged the country. I had worked like for seven years in Lebanon to help and support my family. So I stopped going to school. They arrived in Toronto as refugees at the end of 2016. For the first time in seven years, both Baha and his sister Walla were able to go to school. I was really, like, very happy. It was, I don't know how I explain it. Like, I was excited to study again. I don't know, it was hard. When you stop dreaming in future what you want to be, and you start again, you have to think how, how the life will be after. Can you help me open this? These volunteers meet regularly with the family for hangouts like this, to practice English, among other things. The first time we met was actually here in their home. Um, it was interesting at first just because there was a little bit of a language barrier. The food was, the food was always an icebreaker. And uh, a little later on, we bought a game that uh, that they could play and, and it helps learn phrases, English phrases and spelling. Sometimes we're getting together just to catch up and uh, have something to eat together. Uh, other times we've arranged activities like um, the picnic. We also went uh, apple and pumpkin picking in the fall. They're trying to help us with the language. Even if we don't understand, they always like find a way or solution to make us understand what does it mean or how does this work. I would just say, you know, there was such an obvious great need, you know, watching the news and every, the instability and the volatility in the world today, and you see the challenges that people like the Al Kuli family have to go through. They describe you as part of their family now. How does that feel? Mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to make them feel welcome, right? So um, we think of them the same way, and they are so inspiring to us. Mm. There are challenges ahead for the family. Mazen and his wife Nazik continue to learn English and look for work. Try that one. I like this one, too much. one thing they can always count on it's okay, sweeter this time. Like having company to laugh and share a meal with at their table. Farah Morelli, CBC News, Toronto. <laughs> Hey. Well, perhaps one of your New Year's resolutions is to create less waste. Whether that means buying less plastic or recycling more, we have some inspiration for you. Natalie Nanowski introduces us to a couple of Toronto businesses that are making zero waste a priority. It was uh, a little shocking to me how much waste is produced in this industry. First time restaurant owner Eric Chow wanted to make sure his business was different. You don't have a garbage can, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the part I actually, um, I do quite enjoy that. I know it frustrates people sometimes, and then that's when we'd explain that, you know, nothing we give to you really needs to go to the landfill. Everything can be recycled or compost or reused. Being a fast food restaurant, he hit a few stumbling blocks with the disposal of his takeaway containers. Coffee cups, for instance, and any polycoated paper is not recyclable by the city. However, I was even more shocked to find out that it actually technically is recyclable, but just that the city uh, is not able to do it at this time. Since the city sends these to the landfill, Chow decided to go with a private recycling service that knows how to handle the mix of paper and plastic. We work with transfer station that it's basically a sorting station that's out in Peel, and they're able to sort through all the types of recycling uh, items. And then they bulk it up, uh, they, um, they uh, uh, basically bulk it in big, big packages, and then they send it to or ship it to different recycling uh, companies. A few blocks down, this tortilleria supplies dozens of shops and cafes with fresh tortillas and takes composting back to its roots. So what we like to call it is from farm to table, back to the soil. Any food waste from the restaurant, as well as from our production facility here, gets taken back to the farm, where it's composted, and whatever is feasible for animal feed goes to the chickens, the ducks, the turkeys, the lambs. Last year, they diverted 12,000 pounds of food waste. And although it would be easier to opt into the city's compost services, there's a risk these food scraps will get contaminated with things like plastic and end up in the landfill instead. 
there are more people that want to get interested. And what we're looking to now do is to see how we can scale this in a way that's sustainable in that triple bottom line way, not just environmentally, socially, but economically, how can we make this sustainable as well? There you go. Natalie Nanowski, CBC News, Toronto. Here looking at a live shot of the harbour tonight. It's been a finicky few days when it comes to the weather. We'll tell you what to expect the first few days of the new year next. The weather update is brought to you by Train Extreme Conditions Testing. It's hard to stop a train, really hard. Train, the most reliable heating and cooling brand. The Premier and the Mayor released New Year's messages today full of good wishes for 2019. They also promised to work diligently for their constituents in the year ahead. Our government for the people is committed to working hard for Ontario families. As Premier of this great province, I wish everyone a hopeful, happy, healthy and successful 2019. Our city is booming and I'm determined to continue that success. People are coming to Toronto from around the world with their ideas and their money to invest. We must keep them coming so we can continue to create jobs for as many young people as we can. And we must recommit ourselves to making sure everyone in this city is included in the opportunity that is Toronto in 2019. And as we mark the start of a new year, our Sounds of the Season food drive also comes to an end. All month, you've helped us support local food banks. You've helped us raise more than $700,000 for this season's drive, plus nearly 19,000 pounds of food. We'd like to thank you for all of your donations this year. We couldn't have done it without you. Nick's back now with our extended forecast, and I know there might be a little bit of snow in our future, but I'm also hoping for some sunny days, too. I, I think I can help you out with that. We're just going to have to wait for a couple days, but uh, we are looking at sunshine in the forecast. However, before that, 
Some snowfall. Now, this is uh, in direct opposition to what we had last night. Last night, we had a fair bit of rainfall, anywhere from about 10 to 15 millimetres across the GTA. Tomorrow, we're looking at some light snow. And it's all coming with a weak system. Now, it starts tonight with clear skies. And then tomorrow morning, look for a little bit of sunshine before it clouds over. Around 3 p.m., expect uh, snow showers to start in the GTA. This isn't going to be heavy snow, but because temperatures will be around minus 3, minus 4 degrees when it starts, this will probably accumulate on the ground. It'll go through until the later evening hours and then by Thursday morning we're looking at uh, clearing sky cover. In general it's going to be about two to four centimeters of snowfall across the city of Toronto. However, that being said, it'll come over about a six to eight hour period. So I don't think we're going to see a lot in the way of accumulation. Certainly the roadways won't accumulate, but areas like uh, grassy patches or parks probably going to see about two to four centimeters of snow by the time you wake up on Thursday morning. Down in southwestern Ontario, Tonight, minus 4 degrees in Windsor. You can see it gets cooler as you move toward the London area. Uh, in terms of afternoon temperatures, just above the zero mark and a few flurries uh, for tomorrow. But really where we're expecting to see some of that snow or snow flurries is going to be across the Golden Horseshoe. Tonight, under clear skies, minus 12, minus 13, feeling like minus 15. And then tomorrow, minus 2s and minus 3s across the region. Minus 3 tomorrow with a little bit of snowfall through the evening hours, minus 1 on Thursday, and a little bit of sun sunshine peaking through over the next few days, as promised. Bye. Not a bad looking forecast. Thanks, Nick. You're welcome. That's it. A new year, a new accomplishment for NASA. After the break, we'll tell you about how far their spacecraft went to capture this image. Stay with us. It's mission accomplished for NASA. Its New Horizons spacecraft successfully made the most distant space exploration in human history. That's it. 
New Horizons sent word this morning that it had captured data on a celestial body 6.4 billion kilometers away. That includes its first low-resolution images of the body dubbed Ultima Thule. Color images of the 35 kilometer by 15 kilometer long object should begin arriving over the next two days. And that's our show for you tonight. Thanks for watching. You can stay caught up on news anytime on our website, cbcnews.ca. And in case you missed it at your own celebration, we'll leave you with last night's fireworks from Nathan Phillips Square. Happy New Year, everyone. Good night.